Guys, this is a fantastic cacio e pepe here in Rome. We're searching for a creamy pastas. We want to know what pastas they use in Rome, how they do it, and all the secrets. So today you become a cacio e pepe master. And when you come to Rome, you know where to go. Now we're about to go to Pasta Imperiale, a takeout pasta shop. This is Via dei Coronari, okay? The pasta place is here. Via dei Coronari, it's a beautiful area, beautiful street, not far from Piazza Navona, starts in Piazza Navona, ends in Castel Sant'Angelo. Uh, it's full of antique shops and a must see when you come to Rome. It's nice and cool, even if you come in summer, it's nice and cool. Guys, this is Pasta Imperiale in Via dei Coronari and they make one of the best cacio e pepe in Rome. Look how creamy it is. Full of pepper, amazing. You can do takeout or you can eat it outside if you find a spot. Let's go and find out more about this famous cacio e pepe. Guys, this is Alberto, the man behind Pasta Imperiale in Rome. Alberto, you come from Bologna. Yes, not Roman. The town of Pasta, Parmigiano. What are you doing here? I'm working here, actually. I'm learning. I'm learning how to do the typical Roman dishes in the better way. And you have to judge today if I'm good, if I learned what I had to. Oh, yeah. Well, I can see the chef is Roman, he's cooking, so we're he's learning Roman. from him. Yeah. He is Roman, so you can trust him, at least. So what's so special about you? What, what pasta do you use for the cacio e pepe? Traditionally, um, people get the cacio e pepe with the tonarelli, which is a long, long pasta made with flour and eggs. So there's not water inside. Not semolina. Not semolina. Mm -hmm. And there's a sort of spaghetti, but with a square section, because if you make the pasta by hands, you cannot do the round. You need a machine. But uh, actually, it's a very good pasta. You taste it very al dente. Yeah. You like that beautiful crunchy feeling in your mouth. Yeah, actually, yeah. I do. You can get the spaghetti with the without eggs. Okay. You need the uh, durum wheat uh, dough with okay. water. Semolina and water, yeah. yeah. It's not as much al dente as, as Dayton Arelli, but it's good it's in the cool. same way. So these are the spaghetti that without eggs. So here you see the dough is, let's say, light yellow. Yes. Correct, because there is the semolina, which is uh, light yellow flour right, yes. and water. But if I show you the Dayton Arelli, actually, you can, see, pasta. you can see the color is more S yellow. Same pasta, but darker. Same pasta, but darker. Because With the there egg. are eggs inside. Yes. Well, you use pecorino for cacio e pepe. Yeah. I mean, you're in Rome. I know you're from Bologna, you like parmigiano, but you know. I like parmigiano. Did you convert, so you still... I like parmigiano very much, but I have to uh, use the pecorino, the Roman pecorino for the cacio e pepe. And you know, people say, oh, you know, my carbonara cacio e pepe is too much, the pecorino is too salty. You coming from Bologna, have actually, you added parmigiano to the carbonara? Yeah, actually, it depends by your taste. I usually melt the 50% uh, parmigiano and 50% pecorino for me. But if you, for example, if you say that uh, you, you like, you have no problem with the uh, salty pasta, you can do pecorino, because pecorino one is salty. For example, if you know the uh, Sardinian pecorino, the Sardinian pecorino is not as salty as the Roman. The Roman pecorino is very, very salty. So, so if a client comes here and they think like you, say, you know, I don't want 100% pecorino, 
please do 50 parmigiano, 50 pecorino. No worries. You do it. Uh, it's the moment that we've been waiting for. Here at Pasta Imperiale, we're making a cacio e pepe with tonnarelli. This is a very big amount of pecorino. You mix in pecorino and parmigiano, right? You did it. He's making pecorino and parmigiano. And black pepper, very important. Let's see, let's see what the chef, how the chef is making the famous cacio e pepe from Pasta Imperiale. I'm already interested to try this combination of parmigiano and pecorino. Okay, look. Here we go with the water. Salty water. It depends. If you, for example, use the um, normal water, so without salt, then the result will be different, less saltier. So it depends on, again, on your taste and on, on the pecorino you use. So if you take the pasta out from the boiler, the pasta is around 10 degrees because it's boiling. So the, the trick is lowering the temperature of the pasta before putting in the in the pan, okay? Oh, so you don't get the strings. Yeah, right. Because if you get the strings, it's the, not... the, the dish is wrong. Put out of the boiler when it's, once it's cooked. Yes. Wait some time because the pasta becomes fresher. But like when you say sometimes, you're talking about seconds. Seconds. Like five, 10 seconds, let's yeah, say, no yeah. more. Otherwise, the pasta will... Yeah, right. Will, no, you're right. You, you kill seconds. the pasta, yeah. Five seconds. Beautiful pasta, look at that. A little bit of pasta water. This is the most important part of the recipe, guys, the tossing. This is cacio e pepe, made the right way, here in Rome. The moment we've been waiting for. Look how creamy, look how creamy. Oh. Final touch. Do Pepper Bay, vai, Pepper Bay. <laughs> <laughs> Buon appetito. The moment we've been waiting for. Oh, come on, ladies and gentlemen. A good sign, yeah. The pecorino it is very salty. Yes, the pecorino they use here it's a very salty pecorino romano, and I can tell because they use half parmigiano, half pecorino. So if it's already so salty, and if I don't mix it with parmigiano, it also got to do with the pecorino you work with. Okay, so you always need to taste the pecorino. If it's too salty, I strongly recommend you to mix it like they do it now because this could have been extremely strong and powerful if they didn't mix it with the parmigiano beautiful combination because you get the beautiful kick from the pecorino the pepper is there it's a very nice pepper very balanced saltiness i chose to use the spaghetti uh, made with water and flour people like to use uh, with egg and flour uh, like a pasta luovo fresh egg pasta it's up to you you can choose to have 100 percent pecorino or half pecorino half parmigiano and after trying this because of the pecorino being very strong i do suggest to mix it well done, Marco. Bravissimo. I've got pepper all over my mouth. It's giving me that beautiful feeling in my mouth. It's an experience. It's all about an experience. It needs to do it the right way. It needs to be done the right way to be able to say, wow, I had a cacio pepe. I'm going to have this pepper on my lips for a while. So maybe I need a gelato now to clean my palate before I have another cacio pepe. Ladies and gentlemen, this is one of my favorite restaurants in Rome, Fuoco Lento on Via Flavia. It's a great spot where you can go out at night, have a great meal. We have 50 Calò over there, which is an award-winning Neapolitan pizzeria. At the moment, they say it's one of the best in Italy. This restaurant, they make amazing seafood, meat, or cacio e pepe, which is what we're eating today. Marcella Royal, my favorite hotel, is right there. The Gelateria Alla Romana, my favorite gelato place is here. So this is a very good foodie spot and you must try it. When you come to Rome, you do want to eat like old school Roman restaurant. You go to the table outside, you see people coming past. It's something that you always have to do when you come to Rome or you go to Paris. You want to watch people, eat, drink wine, and this is the best place to do it, in a nice, relaxing atmosphere. Let's go and, and try the cacio e pepe from Fuoco Lento. So basically, the guys at Fuoco Lento, they like to use fresh pasta for cacio e pepe. Now, the chef added extra virgin olive oil and black pepper. Look at this beautiful fresh tonnarelli. 
fresh pasta is so important for cacio e pepe. That's pasta water that the chef added to the oil, to the pepper. So you do this, it brings all the flavors out. Bellissimo, bellissimo. The good thing about fresh pasta is it takes a few minutes to cook, so you don't have to wait like 12, 13, 14 minutes. Look at that reduction. See, so the water reduced, the flavors in the pan are pretty good. Simple, simplicity at its best. The fire is very gentle there, it's not strong, it keeps it warm. You just want to keep the pan nice and warm. Don't burn the pepper. This is the moment that we've been waiting for. These are your make cacio pepe. You add a little bit of pasta water, put the fire back on. We want the pasta to make love with the water, the pepper, mantecatura, tossing, tossing. The chef is making sure that every single uh, tornarello has the flavor of the pepper. A little bit more pasta water. Eh, bellissimo. See, just the way it is, it's already creamy, the way it is. There's no pecorino in there yet, and it's already nice and creamy. And now is the moment where the chef adds the pecorino, so he doesn't make the cream earlier. He puts the pecorino on the spot, like Nonna does it. Fire is very, very gentle. Look at that. A big handful of pecorino created the cream. And it is very creamy. Yeah, you keep doing this, the more you do it, the creamier it gets. And to play it, oh, bellissimo. Look at that. Look at the cream. So important to get a beautiful cacio pepe cream. Ah, oh, nice, uh, beautiful, bellissimo. Ah, oh, more pecorino, a little bit of pepper, and we're ready to eat this wonderful tonnello cacio pepe. Thank you, chef. A round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, this is the cacio e pepe from Fuoco Lento. Have a look. I like that they put the cheese on top. Now look at the creaminess. Look at that. What I love about it is the fact that they use fresh pasta, fresh egg pasta. Usually in many places in Rome they use um, a pasta made with uh, flour and water, also molina and water, but here it's egg pasta that's so full of flavors. The pasta is, is it's just perfect. Look how the pasta is covered by pepper, which is it's very important because the cacio e pepe is all about black pepper and pecorino. Let's see a little bit. Mm. Oh wow, beautiful balance. The balance of the pecorino cheese, the balance of the egg pasta, so the egg pasta absorbs a little bit more. Right amount of pepper, which is not too much. Wow, wow, it's a, I can't call this a light pasta, but it's a, definitely full of flavors. And the fact that they use the egg pasta is what changes my new way of making cacio pepe. It might not look as creamy when you use dry pasta, because the egg pasta absorbs everything. But when you put it in your mouth, <laughs> all the cream is there. It's like hidden in the pasta. Mm -hmm. Can you see? It's just incredible. I really love this one. Guys, Fuoco Lento, for me, makes one of the best cacio e pepe in Rome. Mm. With the extra pecorino chips or crackers. Mm. Yes, it's played and the serves a round of applause. Buonissimo, easy, a pasta made in no time. When you come to Rome, you need to come here to Fuoco Lento and give it a go because this <laughs> is the way cacio e pepe should be made and enjoyed with a nice glass of red wine. Mm. This is a uh, camera and Matteo. Basically, it's everything he, uh, he, he records. What do you think of this cacio pepe? Tell us. Really good, really good. It's delicate, it's not too heavy. I like it. Mm. Superb. <laughs> The next place we're going to is at the Pantheon, my favorite piazza, and this is called Di Rienzo Restaurant. Di Rienzo at the Pantheon. Of course, there are so many top quality restaurants in, in Rome. So many, how can I pick all of them? But this one is special because it's at the Pantheon, my favorite place. 
a beautiful Piazza Pantheon. So you get the view, you get the beautiful food, you can come for a drink. It's a perfect way for me to enjoy an evening in Rome. It's called the Garden of Rome. When you come to DDA, so Andrea or Salvador is that. The reason why I came here 10 years ago when I made this video. I'm going to be there. This guy is entertaining you in a fantastic pasta to be eaten here in Rome. The best pasta in Rome. That's it. Here, guys, here we go with the cacio e pepe. Look. Look. Creamy, the creaminess is there. Creamy, there's pepper everywhere. There's plenty of pepper in this pasta. There's extra on the sides here, just in case you want more. But what I'm looking for here is the creaminess. See here, we got the cashew pepe. That's the cashew. What's cashew pepe? Cashew pepe. Cashew means cheese. Cheese and pepper. Nothing else. Done the right way. I've done it. I think it's time for me to eat it. Get the pasta. Let's let's do the creamy test. Let's do the creamy test. Mmm. 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 Mm. Mm. How do you go wrong with this place? Great pasta, great view. Can you believe where I am? Do you understand where I am? Huh? The Pantheon. The Pantheon. It's such a special place. It's a store in the Pantheon. It's a big hole in the top of the ceiling in the Pantheon. And apparently, part of the history, if it rains, the water does not go through. That's insane. Guys, if you come to Rome, this is a must experience. Ask for Salvatore or Andrea. See here. Tell him Vincenzo sent me here and enjoy a plate of cacio pepe. And you'll feel special, just the way I feel special right now. This is my third cacio pepe of the day. Am I feeling good? Yes, I feel good, but I don't think I can do more than this. So thank you so much for watching this episode. I hope you've learned a lot about cacio pepe. I will see you in the next Vincenzo's Plate video. E ora si mangia. Vincenzo's Plate. Mmm, mmm, mmm.